Hello there, friends and RC family. My name is Alec from High Noon Hobbies, and if you're new to this channel, I very much appreciate you checking it out. I hope that you will stick around, watch at least this video, see if this content seems worth your while, and consider subscribing so that then I can say to you, if you aren't new here, welcome back to yet another Friday upload. This time we are in the beautiful San Rafael Swell portion of Utah, near Price, Utah. If you're unfamiliar with this area, and I know, I, I say it a lot, but if you are unfamiliar with the swell, I absolutely recommend that you check this area out if you ever get the opportunity. This is a beautiful area full of lots of different recreating activities, everything from climbing to RC crawling and everything in between. And of course, we are out here with the 801 RCC Builds and Adventures group, and I personally came out with Sons of Crawl, we all know Mike, as well as Cameron, whom y'all have become become quite fond of as well. Taylor, who's got his new Joker truck out, as you can see in front of me there. And uh, well, we are out here to hit the 801 RCC uh, San Rafael Swell Grand Prix. This is a pretty sweet uh, event, the first time that I've made it out to this event. And uh, well, I had a blast. But unfortunately, I also had a bit of a... Uh, bit of a problem, if you will, with the High Noon Capra. And anyone who caught the live stream last Sunday, you're probably familiar with this issue already, but we are going to go ahead and recap it and uh, take a look at what exactly happened. So, we are out here. The kind of small sluts group is sticking together through the 200 gate course. If you guys have not caught one of my videos talking about an 801 comp before, these comps aren't very... Well, they're not very compy. Um, these comps are more a way for, uh, for RC guys in the area, in, in Utah in general, to get together and just have a good time together. This is, uh, this is kind of the type of event that brings the community together just because of the beautiful areas that they choose. And of course, uh, with 200 gates to go through, that gives you ample time to meet up with a bunch of your buddies and have some good times just chatting and, uh, and enjoying each other's company. So that's more or less what these competitions are about. Of course, you could make it as competitive as you want, but there are no on-course judges that are officially sanctioned. So any sort of competition that you would be doing on these uh, 801 RCC comps uh, would be uh, self-run, if you will. If you wanted to do some sort of timing or point system, you absolutely can. Uh, but 801, the guys that run these comps don't actually set up any sort of scoring system. They just set up the gates and allow you to do what you will with these gates. So uh, you can see there at the start of the video, I actually started out this run with the High Noon Comp Rig. And if you guys are unfamiliar with that, that is my 10-2 with Rock Pirates bits. And it's covered up by a Proline cliffhanger body that is painted silver, uh, courtesy of Scumbag RC or Luke. Luke from Scumbag RC, one of my good buddies, part of the slut group. Now, if you are unfamiliar with or you've never done a 200 gate course, these are relatively long courses. And so it is pretty typical for us, the group that I run with, at least, uh, we're, you know, we're a little more tame. Uh, we tend to take a break about halfway through uh, towards gate 100 and, uh, you know, regroup, maybe grab some water, head back to camp if we need to to grab any sort of snack, sunscreen, anything like that, which is what we did this time. We hung out underneath the sunshade for a little bit, just recouped some of our energy, grabbed a snack, grabbed a water, and then headed back out. When I headed back out, I decided, you know what? I think uh, I think I want to try out the High Noon Capra for this second section of the course. I had been scoping it out beforehand. I knew that some of these lines were going to be tough for the Capra, but I wanted to give it a go and see how, uh, how it fared up against some of these more challenging obstacles on the second portion of the course. The first portion that we're kind of encountering here is, uh, you know, it's pretty ledgy and there's some interesting spots, but there's nothing too complicated, there's nothing too technical, uh, but once we get uh, towards the end, I wanted to see how the Capra would do in some of the more technical lines towards the end. So I kind of got this mentality of uh, race to the end. And so I ended up being a little bit antsy through the, some of these sections here. And, uh, well, we're going to see how that ends up for me. But uh, 
I thought that this was a really cool section of the course, so I just wanted to throw in as many shots as I could of uh, what we were doing before the accident, if you will. Um, this shot is, I thought, really cool, and I'm super sad that the gimbal arm ended up in the shot here, because I really, I thought that this little kind of cavern that we ended up driving through was really nifty and this is one of those things about the 801 rcc comps is uh, mike and zinger the guys that run these comps uh, they are actually from west valley hobbies uh, or west valley hobby i will throw a link to west valley down in the description if you guys uh, live in the salt lake city or the kind of uh, northern utah region and you're looking for an absolutely awesome hobby shop i definitely recommend checking out west Valley Hobbies. They are fantastic guys and they put on these awesome events for the community at absolutely no cost. So anything that I can do to support them I will do because I really really appreciate everything that these guys do for the community. But uh, this, this section here we're kind of just cruising through and I've got this mentality of we're going to race to the end and try to get to the more technical gates so that I can get a bit more footage of, uh, of that crawling. Little do I know that I won't be getting any footage of that crawling whatsoever. Um, like I mentioned, if you guys missed the live stream that I did last Sunday, I am going to start doing some kind of combinations on Sunday. So some Sundays will be a actual edited video and other Sundays will be a live stream and I'm going to try to make the schedule very clear beforehand. I know that last weekend I didn't do it. We had a decent crowd for the live stream. I know we could do quite a bit better though so I will definitely be letting you guys know next time we go live um, but that may be this Sunday so go ahead and uh, you know keep keep uh, stay tuned I should say to all of our social media channels to find out when we'll be streaming and uh, how you can watch it. So you can see my antsiness getting the better of me here. I am trying to skip the line, skip the queue if you will, and find other ways up. Uh, this upper ledge here though is quite a bit trickier than I anticipated it being. As you can see, I just kind of started trying to ram the front of the Capra into the ledge without uh, <laughs> without much luck there. So I finally get the rear of the, or I'm sorry, the front of the Capra up over this really, really overhung ledge. And then I realized the only way that I'm going to be able to get the rear up there to follow the front is if I use this rock here off to the left hand side. So I use my all wheel steer and I kind of shimmy my way on over there so that I can use this rock and uh, try to use it to kind of pinch myself almost like I'm in a v-notch and bring at least one of those rear tires up so I can drag the other one up which you can see starts to happen right here I lose it a couple times because this whole area is super super dusty but I finally make it up and over and of course into a giant chasm on the other side of this rock which I then have to uh, crab walk my way out of trying not to hit that cone along the way. Now I'm going to continue my crab walk and then use four wheel steer to pivot myself back around and get through that other gate there. So this is, you know, this is fun technical crawling, but this is definitely not as technical as some of the stuff that we were trying to get to. Um, so I was really just trying to kind of get through it as quickly as possible. Now, the way that this particular area is kind of geologically formed. There are a bunch of these ledgy sections around the periphery of this larger flat rock area that uh, is kind of elevated from the rest of the uh, desert floor, if you will. So we are trying to, at this point, we've kind of hooked our way around the periphery on on the left hand side let's just call it the left hand side of the rock formations that we're dealing with here and we have to now make our way up and around this periphery and onto the flat portion oh dear and taylor gives us the beans there to get over that ledge but we've got to make it up and over all of these ledges here to get onto the flat section of rock towards the center of this rock formation and then uh, we will from that point forward uh, move on to the far right hand periphery to finish out this 200 gate course. So we are 
We're currently watching Taylor go through. Taylor just got through in his Wraith. If you guys haven't seen this very, very dominant 2-2 Wraith with four-wheel steer and dig, I definitely recommend you check out the more recent video that I put out of Taylor hitting this or, or hitting the North versus South uh, finals, the actual finale courses, he hit, uh, I believe we showed him on course number one for the unlimited class with this 2-2 rate. Definitely worth checking out. This rig is super, super awesome, and Taylor is an incredible driver. Uh, but we are here with Taylor. Now we're watching Cameron. Uh, you can see Cameron in his comp rig, a rig that we have definitely become familiar with on this channel, hitting this obstacle here. Back there in the background with the blue mog, that is Sons of Crawl. I believe we've also seen his blue mog on some of our trail crawls but if not you've definitely seen him on uh, our youtube channel or i'm sorry on the instagram because i've posted plenty of pictures of that blue mog i think it's a uh, very gorgeous looking rig flat rail mog pretty cool i think so at least and squeezing his way through the crack We're making it up this is kind of the last upper section of the ledginess before we get to the flat open spaces up above as you can see it starts to open out or open up and flatten out there and so now I'm going to really start laying on the speed and uh, well let's talk for a second about this setup so this is a four wheel steer axial cap out of the box so uh, this is the newer design that came with the four wheel steer I didn't do this conversion myself so it's already got the setup in terms of the slight cage modifications that they had to do to fit the uh, rear wheel steer setup in there which uh, I've quite enjoyed this rig and I went for many many months without changing anything about this rig um, and then just recently I would say about three months ago or so maybe two months ago I, uh, I decided that it was time to give this guy a little performance enhancement because I absolutely love crawling with this capper. I think it's a really fun truck to watch crawl, uh, but unfortunately it just wasn't quite keeping up with my other rigs and I wasn't having as much fun with it as I thought I should have, so I decided to give it a little bit of a performance boost. And uh, Scumbag RC, Luke from Scumbag RC helped me out with that a bit. He gave me a, uh, let's see, he gave me some wheels and tires and uh, he also gave me a uh, receiver for a fly sky as well as a fly sky remote and that allowed me to set this rig up as uh, as Logan does um, not exactly obviously as Logan does because I don't have the fancy metal axles or any of that sort of nonsense but uh, the one thing I do that Logan does is ooh and uh, first hit there I'm sure that did well for the flat skid um, but uh, the one thing that Logan and I are similarly set up with uh, with our Capras is the Fly Sky remote and uh, using the potentiometers, one of the potentiometers on the front top of the remote for your rear wheel steer. So I replaced the 2-in-1 ESC with a Hobbywing 1080. I threw the Fly Sky receiver in there. You can see I'm still quite antsy, trying to get ahead of everyone, trying to push on the group and get to the end of this course so we can get to the technical crawling. And uh, yeah, it doesn't work out for me so well. So I threw all that on and then uh, I, I thanked Scumbag RC and I decided it wasn't quite good enough. <laughs> so I started 3D printing flat skids and uh, I ended up with a design that I liked quite a bit. This is made out of uh, ABS plastic that I printed on my Ender 3 V2 and it held up quite well until this ledge. Um, this I thought was an uphill uh, gate. Turned out it was a downhill gate and in my antsiness I decided to just send it off of this ledge and I don't know if you noticed there but it was immediately uh, not in the best of shape and now we have some serious troubles as you can see it is very broken there was a link hanging off there and uh, Cameron nice enough to point out with his middle finger what's going on here but we snapped that upper link mount and uh, we also lost the screw for the lower link mounts one of those has popped out the other one is hanging on by just a thread and so this is no longer a runnable truck and we have to make the walk of shame back to the car but that is the tale of how I broke the high noon Capra I hope that you guys enjoyed that's all i've got for you folks today and uh we will see you on uh on this sunday's upload whether it's a live stream or an upload i'll let you guys know very soon all right thanks guys cheers